In 2008, the government granted a number of new licences to explore for oil and gas across the UK. A number of these cover the Weald area in Sussex and are held by oil exploration and production companies Quadrilla, Celtic Energy and iGas. Quadrilla are currently drilling an exploratory well in Balcombe, while Celtic are applying for permission to drill at a site near Fernhurst, inside the South Downs National Park. Celtic have identified a number of gas leads and prospects within their license areas, but are particularly interested in an area of geology that has potential to extract gas using hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. The proposed site is down narrow country lanes, and is made up of agricultural land surrounded by mature woodland and ancient hedgerows. About 150 metres to the south of the site is a historic furnace pond, an archaeological site. So, what would this site look like if the proposals are allowed to go ahead? To extract gas by fracking, a well is drilled many thousands of feet down into an area of shale rock that contains the gas. Millions of gallons of water, mixed with sand and fracking chemicals, are then forced into the well under massive pressure. The pressure creates small fractures in the rock, which are held open by the sand, and the gas forces its way back up to the surface, along with a proportion of the fracking fluid. Setting up the well requires large-scale industrial activity and huge amounts of heavy goods traffic to ship in materials and equipment. The traffic doesn't stop once the fracking starts. According to industry and US government figures, for just one well pad, literally thousands of heavy goods vehicle journeys will be required to ship in the fracking fluid and take away the waste. The waste contains both toxic chemicals and naturally occurring radioactive material brought up from the shale. The drilling and fracking operations run in shifts, year-round, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Large amounts of noise and pollution are created by the drilling equipment and by diesel generators needed to power the fracking operation. To allow the all-night working, massive floodlights are needed causing light pollution throughout the surrounding area. Gas needs to be periodically vented and burned creating more light, noise and air pollution. The gas industry has suggested there may be over 10 trillion cubic feet of recoverable gas under Sussex. Figures released by the US Department of Energy in 2013 estimated the technically recoverable gas in the south is significantly lower, at about 1 trillion cubic feet. That's enough to supply the UK for just a few months. Celtic believe that they can extract gas in Sussex from around 467 square kilometres. According to US Department of Energy figures, Top performing wells can yield about 5 billion cubic feet per well. Average performing wells yield about 1 billion cubic feet per well. Based on this data, extracting the industry estimated amount of gas would require between 2,000 to 10,000 wells across the area. Each drilling location or drill pad can have up to about 16 wells. That means that even if ideal drilling conditions exist, Somewhere between 100 to 600 drill pads would be required. The reality is that there is not enough space for that many wells in Sussex. The UK has about 1 40th of the land area of the US. But what does even 60 drill pads look like across the National Park in Sussex? If the near maximum number of wells are drilled on each pad, it would allow about 900 wells. At US average well performance, this number of wells would yield about a tenth of industry estimates, enough gas to fuel the UK for just a few months. These estimates are based on industry and US government figures and give a clear indication of the vast scale of the activities if the industry is allowed to proceed.
As well as an immediate and highly destructive impact on communities, fracking carries proven long-term risks to the environment. Fracking can cause small earthquakes and leak methane and toxic chemicals from the well while it's in use. One of the most worrying risks comes along once the well has been abandoned and capped with cement. Numerous studies around the world have found that a significant percentage of wells leak over time, and this could mean hundreds of wells in Sussex leaking methane and fracking chemicals into our water for decades to come.